What's up guys? In the comments of one of my other videos I noticed that some of you had quite some issues with exposing S-Log footage for Sony cameras correctly, but today we're going to change that once and for all. For that I'm going to show you a way how to set up your camera to automatically expose S-Log footage pretty accurate. So after this video you hopefully never have to deal again with wrongly exposed footage that falls apart in post-production. It will probably be so easy to work with S-Log footage that you're not only using it for your client work but also for less important stuff like YouTube vlogs and Instagram stories. But let's first have a look at how damn nice S-Log3 footage can look like if you shot it with the right exposure and credit it well. It's about time to test a new office and what better reason could there be than speaking about exposing Aslog correctly. I'm sorry if you hear a bit of the rain in the background, Norway's summer are just not like the ones in Spain. If you have made it to this part of the video, you have probably used log profiles before and you were not really happy with the results. In that regard, we should probably first clarify why we're using lock profiles at all and not just go with something that's easy to use like Cine2. The first reason is that it comes with a higher dynamic range than most of the other picture profiles and that you have a bit more freedom in terms of color correction and color grading in post-production. The differences in dynamic range get especially visible when we compare, for example, shooting without a picture profile versus shooting in s 3 In this example, I have been exposing the image based on the foreground and as you see, the background, especially the sky is pretty much blown out if we don't use a picture profile. If we now switch to a picture profile like s 3 we are able to expose for the foreground while maintaining all the information from the highlights and without blowing out the sky. Filming with a higher dynamic range leaves us with more shades between the brightest and the darkest part of the image and after post-production that's often a bit more pleasing to the eye. The thing with using a flatter lock profile is that you're generally shooting slightly overexposed and it isn't as easy to nail the settings 100% of the time. And if you don't get the settings right in all of your shots, then there's a quite high likelihood that the picture will start falling apart in post-production. The most common way to expose your S-Log footage is by using the small histogram in the corner of your camera and make sure that the highlights aren't clipping. A good rule of thumb for me was to keep the lightning meter always around plus two to avoid getting any grain in the shadows. Imagining that you have around 50 shots per video, then adjusting the histograms for every single clip is quite a bit of work. But the great thing is that there's a super easy quick fix that works around 99% of the time. It's not high-end cinematography before the comments are starting, but it gets the job done and makes filming in S-Log way more enjoyable and a thousand times easier. So easy that you probably start using it for everything except for slow motions, and low light footage. With that little trick, your camera will automatically expose the footage for you and you never have to worry about grainy shadows again. <sighs> it's getting a bit cold and rainy again here, but let's have a look at how to set up the camera to always have the perfect exposure. By default, all Sony cameras come with an aperture priority option. While filming in aperture priority mode, your camera will automatically adjust the shutter speed based on the chosen exposure and keep the aperture and ISO the same. In that way, the constant changes in lightning in, for example, a run and gun vlog will be buffered by the shutter speed and the exposure is always kept on point. I know that filming in that way heavily breaks the 180 degree rule, but to be honest, nobody on YouTube will ever notice and if it prevents you from getting bad S-Log footage, I think it's a pretty good deal. To enter aperture priority, you can either use the mode dial and set it to A or hit FN in the regular movie mode and then select aperture priority. Once you're there, it's all about choosing the right exposure. For me, normally setting the dial to around 2.3 worked pretty fine and I never had any issues. If you have chosen your exposure, just try to keep the ISO at the native level. For me, an S-Log3 and the Sony a7R4, it's 500, but that can vary quite a lot depending on the model of the camera. In the last step, you're choosing the aperture that you prefer to film with. Depending on if you have an ND filter, you either have to crank up the aperture or adjust the shades of the filter to at least somewhat match the 180 degree roll. Just as a short note, because I'm also quite often forgetting it, the 180 degree roll is saying that you should film at the shutter speed double the frame rate. And well, if you have never thought about buying a variable ND filter, I think you should. Especially if you're filming a lot outside, this little detail will decide if your videos end up looking cinematic or not. And I'm pretty sure we all want cinematic videos. But yes, that's pretty much it. Now that you're filming in aperture priority mode and the exposure is set, filming in S-Log should be a breeze and I hope you never have to deal with any bad footage again. Second video done for this week, now I'm basically back on track on making one video every single week since the beginning of April. And if you... These droplets... 
And if you would like that I continue with making as many videos, then please make sure to leave a thumb up and subscribe to the channel. I'm still pretty new to the YouTube game and this is obviously not making any money. So all the time that I put in is basically unpaid and uh, I guess I have to change that in future. But until then, I'll just continue and hope for the best. Oh, and if you really want to support the channel, just check out the Patreon link in the description. There you can support us by one dollar or you can even buy yourself into the end card of this or the next videos by supporting us with five dollars every month. Not saying that you should do that, but just think about it, yeah? Now I'm really done and we'll probably see us in the next week when we are on the first road trip with our new camper. Let's see if we freeze to death in here or if winter duvets are enough, but it will be cinematic.